Hey, welcome. It's nice to see you here this Friday. It is always something I look forward to, getting together with my friends. Really nice. Help me to remember to remind all of you this, but we are not going to meet the next two Fridays because of the holidays that are coming up. We will meet again the first Friday in December and the second Friday in December, and then we'll not meet the third and fourth. So we'll do that just to ease up a little bit and make sure that we all have time to get together with our families and do all of the prep that we want to do and all of that. So just make sure I put that out there. Also, again, putting this out there, if anybody loves to do editing on uh, in Adobe Adobe Premiere and they want they want to do a Zoom with me and walk me through um, trying to edit my past discussions and, since Michael left and get those up on um, YouTube, just message me, let me know because I'm still working on that. But I'm getting close. I'm getting close. I'm starting to learn it. Okay, so what kinds of things do you want to talk about this morning? You know, we have this month of November. The Mother's University topic is music. And so that is certainly something that we can talk about. Also, wherever you are in the Catch the Vision course, whether you're going through it for your first time or if you're going, going through it again, which I highly recommend, it's so good to just go over and over and over that. There's so much good information there. Those are things we can discuss. Anything you came up with in your own personal reading this week, those are all good topics to talk about. So if there's anything that's kind of uh, foremost in your heart that you want to share, let's do that. I'm just going to leave that open for you for a while. I feel like if I talk too much at the front at the first, then I direct the discussion rather than the spirit directing it. So, and as you all know, very often it's a comment or a question that's brought up by one of you that um, directs us in the way that we're supposed to go. So if anybody's been thinking, oh, I kind of have a thing I just want to bring up. It may not be the topic for the day, but just it's a thought that I kind of want to throw out there. <clears throat> we have nine of us on here. So including me, nine possibilities of directions, of ways to go. <clears throat> Can I just ask a quick question? Please. <laughs> yeah. She's not going to give us direction, but but i'm kind of wondering about direction because for a while we had like assignment like we kind of had an assignment mm -hmm. and it did i miss something where that's not the direction we're going anymore no every month we have catch the vision and the mother's university topic as our basic assignments because that is stuff that we that kind of goes along with the rotation and the um and the months and aside from that it's only if i feel strongly impressed that we need to go a certain direction that i do that many of the times when we had an assignment we would come and we would talk about that for the first 10 or 15 minutes i'm open to that still to doing that if that's what you want to do but it seems like we tend to um find our direction and then the rest of the time we end up talking about a topic that seems to be pertinent to the group and that's kind of directed by the spirit. So I I didn't know if I was getting in the way of that by providing the assignment. So that's kind of where we are. It might be a middle stage right now. I'm not sure. We might go to more assignments after the first of the year, but but not as we um, round out this year. I kind of have two unrelated thoughts, but um, the first is about music. Um, this week, one of my children kind of got upset at life that we have responsibilities and things we have to do. Uh -huh. And it was like, I have to do so much stuff. I have to clean my room and make my bed. And, <laughs> and you know, all those things that we get upset about sometimes because life. Um, and I said, you know what? You're right. Let's just go through all the things you, you need to do every day. Let's just go through them. And so we started, you know, 
make my bed, get dressed and went through the day, that list. And I said, should we just take these off the list at each thing? She's like, well, no. And we got to music and she has to practice music every day. And I said, You're, you know what? We, we don't need music. Let's just get rid of it. We don't need, like we can get rid of all our CDs and all of our music books and our instruments. Get rid of them all. And she looked at me and she went, no, we can't do that. Music is beautiful. <laughs> and I was like, but it's something we have to do every day. You have 20 minutes of practice time every day that you have to do. And she was like, yeah, but that's important. And this is my little seven-year-old. Um, and I was like, oh, so we shouldn't, should, we shouldn't get that off our schedule. We should keep that. She's like, well, yeah. And then a few things down art, we have to create something every day. And, and I said, what, should we get rid of this? We don't need art in our house. Let's just get rid of our crayons and our paints and our art on the wall. And, and she just looked at me and she's like, no, why, why would you do that? <laughs> And by the end, I was like, you know what? We really probably don't need this. And she's like, no, we need all these things. They're important. Um, but it was just fun seeing how, you know, she didn't care if we cut out math so much. <laughs> but the music and the art and the reading and the stories were so important for her. And just seeing, you know, at a little age, how important all those little things were to her. I loved I love that little interaction that I had. And that was so good for you to do that. Take the time to do that. So many times we don't, we don't stop. We don't pause and, um, and kind of give that respect and honor to their questions and their thoughts and feelings. But I think you're really good about that, doing that with your kids. <laughs> I don't know, but at that moment I was. Um, the we all have our like, moments, right? So anyway, sorry, go on to your second thing. <laughs> I have a little mom group. I don't know if I'd call it a mother of influence group necessarily, but we have a little homeschool group and we have four moms that get together afterwards while the kids play and, and talk about well-educated heart stuff. And um, this week, one of the women in our group initially was really concerned about being in our group because the three other moms are members of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and she is Catholic uh not really a practicing Catholic but <laughs> she's Catholic and um she's also of a different ethnicity than the rest of us and she's like I don't think I fit in this group I don't think I fit in this group I don't think I fit in this group and she wasn't there last week but this week we had decided to talk about a thought that Marlene had shared to Thursdays ago, I think maybe, about why she includes people of different faiths in her, in her books. And um, she had a thought about, you know, learning about different faiths is important because we all have the same underlying values and, and whatnot. And so the one woman missed that we were talking about that this week. And so she showed up after missing a week. And that's what we were discussing was this thought about it's important to learn about different faiths and religions and cultures because they're all important and they're all good for us to learn. And one of the moms that is LDS, is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, she shared in her discussion that she was raised in a church. I've, I, don't even, I don't even know that this is a thing, but she was raised in a small town in a church that shared Methodist and Protestant pastors. And so like every three years they'd switch. They'd go from Methodist Protestant, back to Methodist, Protestant, and her, one of her parents was Methodist, and one of them was Protestant, and so that's how she was raised, was learning basically in both faiths, and then when she moved out, she joined the Catholic Church, and then as she got, when she was older, she joined the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and, wow. and just it was so cool to be able to watch this mom that was like, I don't know if I fit in. I don't know if I fit in. I don't know if I fit in. Yeah. And this is about, yeah, we love all faiths. We love all cultures. We love all people. We love learning about all these things. And also this lady's been like active part of four different religions in her life. And none of us had known that about her. And so I loved just the inclusivity of mothers of influence and well-educated heart. 
when everything is so divided, it's so inclusive. I love that. I love that. And I love that that happened to be your discussion that next week, you know, and that just naturally led to that so that she could feel that inclusivity and know that she was welcome and part of that group. I love that. I, I feel like, I, I don't know if I can think of anything that would be excluded from well-educated heart. So. Yeah. Right. And mothers of influence, just women getting together to share the things that they're learning, the things that are warming their hearts. I think it's such a wonderful thing. And I have found that like I've shared with you all, just, I can talk to anybody about it, about what it is I'm doing and what we're talking about. And, and that's a great conversation starter. Actually, we had a neighborhood get together last Sunday afternoon. And I was talking to one of my neighbors, one of the, the husbands, you know, and he loved the idea of it and thought it was just great and, you know, wanted to know more about it. So it's just something that is easy to talk to people about once you get over that initial, you know, hurdle, whatever that is for you. But that's oh, yeah. awesome. A few random thoughts I've had this week. Yeah, I love that, Melissa. Thanks for sharing. And Rachel, did I answer your question? I forget to make sure that. That I do that. I hope I did. And any of you, if you have feedback for do you want subjects as we go into this next year, we will still be having the Catch the Vision and the Mother's University. If you would like assignments of actual reading assignments, I am happy to do that. I just so many times we went so quickly from that to the meat of whatever we were discussing, but Whatever, whichever way you guys want to go, I'm happy to do it. So know that this is your group. So you get to, um, you get to have input in that and how we do that. I'm being kind of quiet today. I just, I really feel like I don't, I don't want to uh, take this a certain way because I'm not, I, I'm not sure, but I feel like it's going to go somewhere. Amy. Thanks. Well, I, it's funny that Melissa brings up those two things. Mine aren't as probably as deep and profound as hers, but it, it has, you know, it, it, uh, it, uh, it's kind of been on my brain this week as well. The last few days, the, the first one that she talked about, you know, the kids being like, oh my gosh, uh, so much, yeah, I do it all. I do it all. That's what I hear from my teenagers. I do it all. I do it all. And you're like, mm-hmm. Yeah, yes, you sure do. And um, my my uh, one of two of my girls are on the TikToks, and so I I'm on the TikToks as well to kind of monitor what they do, stuff like that. And one just like Facebook, one things get popped up into your feed, and mine feed is usually like inspirational, you know, stuff like that, right? But this one I happen to see of, of the TikToks of this guy of um, kind of doing chores through the decades, right? And in the 80s, he's like, you know, the parents like, hey, Cyrus, go, you know, go do the, go rake up the leaves. And he's raking them up. And, and the, the dad says, hey, if you want some water, you know, you can come in and get some water. And the dad, and the guy's like, raking up the leaves, I'll just get some water from the hose. And that's the 80s. The 90s is the guy comes and puts, you know, there's the leaves and he comes and puts his trash bags on the, on the, on the leaves. And he's kind of like, uh, fine, I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. You know, just kind of still doing it, but having a little bit of a, a, a tantrum. And then it says chores through the 2000 and you hear the mom say, Cyrus, go pick up the leaves right now. Mom, do you have to tell everybody in the neighborhood that knows? Oh my gosh, I can't. And he's just, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. You know, just complaining. And of course, my husband and I, we were laughing. And my two youngest were looking at my husband and I like, yeah, it's not that funny, you know, kind of thing, right? But it made me think like, what is, what happened in those decades to, you know, like, but the kids nowadays asking the kids like, you guys, it's, it's, you're part of your duty to help. You're part of the family. It's actually your duty to help this. It's not like, oh, you get to, would you, you know, 
let me sugarcoat it for you. No, it's your duty. You're part of our unit. You've got to chip in just like anything kind of anyway. So that's kind of been on my brain because I've been getting that with my teenage girls. And then the next one where Melissa was talking about um, her friend being inclusive and, you know, not feeling um, uh, like, you know, wrong group, you know, I'm, I'm uh -huh. my big person for this group kind of thing. Um, I started going, my husband had got a, um, he won a free punch pass to a, a, a gym that's in Station Park that's in Farmington up here. And, uh, and so I thought, oh, I'll go join. Can we hold the blankets? So I, I started doing the classes. I come in sweats that have paint on them and a t-shirt that might have a few holes. I go to this gym and there's boobs everywhere, you guys. You know what I mean? It's like the low and this, and it's the matching and all of that. And I, I did the classes in the early morning, which was a struggle, but I did it. And, but I started to think like the Melissa's friend, like, I just, I don't think I belong here. I just, I don't belong here. This is, this is not, not for me kind of thing. And then it's such an interesting where it's the battle in my head of, do I care? Do I not care? Who am I around? Is this, is this something good for, for my, you know, my heart, you know, kind of thing, you know, warming my heart, you know, all, all of that. And so I don't know. It's that those two things, along with like Melissa, those have been on my brain as well with the kids. How did we get from to I feel like I am literally having to duck to a broom to their hand, and um, and then just feeling like you know. Um, I don't know. Do I belong? I belong in those uh, groups of beautiful women. I call them beautiful women. That's why I don't go grocery shopping with any after day because the bountiful boots come out with their hats. And they're wearing those felt hats right now and, you know, looking so cute. And I, I don't know, it, it does something, I think, to, to, as a mom, you know, mentally and confidence and all that. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just, spinning now. So if anybody has thoughts, that would be great. Okay, moms, who has some thoughts about that? I shared something in the chat just to, uh, I brought it up before as recommended reading. It's so great. It is so good. I'm going to share the subtitle while you ladies think if there's something you want to share on this topic with Amy. <clears throat> on either of those, either our children, you know, kind of balking at the, the idea of working together, working as part of their family responsibility, this new idea that that's just not cool, or this idea of not, <laughs> not fitting in and finding a place where you're, where that's your place. Sorry, I can't, obviously I can't type and talk at the same time. Hey, Emily, it's good to see you. Hopefully she's connected fully, but she knew that was going to be a question mark. Okay, moms, or what else? What else is out there? I'd love to, I wish Emily had a better, stronger connection because I'd love to hear from her on that subject of uh, the kids working with us. And that's just, that's a hard one. Anybody else? Sorry, I know it's awkward. I know it's hard when we have those spaces of quiet and yet um, it usually leads to something good. So don't feel uncomfortable, no, it's okay. It just gives moms a chance to gather their thoughts and figure out what we're doing. Go ahead. Hi, Paige. It's a super simple thought. Um, yeah. Sorry, my. No, it's okay. 
Uh, but I always had the thought of, you know, because a lot of times I kind of feel to me like, no. do I fit in? I feel no. different, you know. Maybe in a way we are supposed to feel that way so that we can teach our kids different uh, and kind of shift how, shift our culture in a way. Um, and so maybe, so maybe it can be a good thing so that you find your own people where you do feel comfortable, like mothers of influence who you can relate with, and then that goes on to your children and you can influence in a different way that is not, I don't know, just away from the world and it's okay to be different. I really, really like that page. Um, I love that. You know, that whole, that saying that we're a peculiar people, we're supposed to be a peculiar people. How peculiar are you? You know, that's not a bad thing. I mean, not to be weird, but to be set apart, to be different, to maybe feel a little bit on the outside. Other thoughts about that? I love that page. Thank you. If you don't jump in, I'm going to have to start talking and then then you guys are stuck because it's really hard. You know how hard it is to jump in once I get going. <laughs> but I see so much wisdom in that and doing that so that your children know how to do that. I don't know if yet if you've yet realized how much they pattern everything they do after you. It might not look like it sometimes, but they absolutely do. Amy? Well, I was just going to say, I think sometimes the struggle I have is, and I can see it in my girls, especially um, right now, my 15-year-old, where trying to be your authentic self or be you, other people may not like it and, and get on you. You know, I think I made the comment the other day, a commercial with this mustache and I'm like oh my gosh he looks like a 70s you know whatever and my girls are like mom that's so rude and mean and I thought I'm just sharing my opinion of what this is you know but is it is it culturally right now like do I really need to hone in on my kids you know because sharing something sharing an opinion sharing a thought that doesn't go along with what everybody else you know um you know, you just, you, you'll get hammered on it. So then you feel kind of stuck sharing whatever it is, you know, even if it's meant to be something wonderful and beautiful, but it's, I don't know, that that's something that I've actually have been strug struggling with and with my kids for the last actually couple of months because it's trying to teach them like, it's okay to think like this and it's okay to have these views and, you know, everyone's different and all of that. And it's the world around just, trying to be like, no, you need to think like this. You need to do this. You need to, you know, that kind of thing. And that is at the moment been a very uphill battle for me. So I can see in the sense of trying to fit in and trying to be who you are. It, it's, it's, it's pretty, I don't know. It's pretty hard. Yeah. In a world that's hypersensitive and Kristen's on. So I think Kristen's going to say something. <laughs> So let's hear from Kristen. It's been a little while. Um, hi, everybody. Um, sorry, I keep having things. I mean, like for months, every, I keep having things come up on Friday. And even today, I have to go get somebody at the airport. And so I'm going to have to leave early. Um, but so I just read a quote. And honestly, I didn't have my glasses on. And the, it, <laughs> the quote, I could barely read the quote. And then the name of who said it was smaller. And so I, there was no way I was going to read that. But it just talked, it just said something about how having a relationship with Jesus Christ is going to help our children overcome their, um, I'm trying to remember the word it used, is, is going to help them overcome the issues that they have, whatever issues they are. And so helping them learn how to have a relationship with Jesus Christ is going to do that much more than trying to teach them how to overcome each little issue. And I feel like it's the same for us. The more we're focusing on, I mean, I, it obviously is the 
the same for us. If, if we're focusing on our relationship with the Savior, if we're trying to have a relationship with the Savior, then um, as that grows and deepens, then suddenly we don't care anymore nearly as much. And there's a podcast that I listened to a couple of months ago, and it was a guy, oh, I wish I could remember his name. He just wrote a book that was released through De Deseret Book, and I don't remember the name of his book. And his wife, you've heard of, because I, I mean, if you listen to any church podcasts or anything, you've heard of her. But um, he, he basically, in this podcast, talked about, he's a, he's a medical doctor, and she's a historian for the for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And he talked about how everybody talks about now being their authentic self. And he said, why would I wanna be my authentic self? I'm kind of a jerk. And it's only when I turn to the savior and I learn to do what the savior would do and let him work in my life. And that then I become somebody better. And, I, and as I listened to that, I thought, you know what? The world right now, is so, I think that they're scared. They're scared of, we try and change and it is hard. I mean, don't we all know that? It is hard. If we have a habit we're trying to break or just trying to be a better person, it is hard to make changes. And so Satan has convinced the, the world that, hey, just be who you are. Everybody should accept who you are. And so, you know, if you are, you know, if you, if you just are inclined to be a liar all the time, then that's who you are and you should just live with it and it's fine. And, and it, and, and Christ teaches a higher law that if we turn to him, he can help us. It's still not going to be easy peasy, but he can help us with it. And, and, and I just loved, I loved in that podcast when he said somehow him saying that, I'm kind of a jerk as I am. I don't, why would I want to accept that? Why do I want to accept that as my authentic self? I can be so much more. And anyway, I just love that thought. I have to unmute myself again. Sorry. Um, Kristen, I love that. I really like that. And I think that's one of those things where Satan takes something that actually has a fine and positive meaning, maybe how it was produced, but but he takes it and twists it and then gets us so confused about what it is he's, you know, what it is we're trying to do. We confuse ourselves. But um, I love that idea that why would I want to be my authentic self? I need to turn to the Savior and um, submit to him and learn how to be who I am supposed to be, um, who I can be with him. I love that. That's beautiful. That's so good. And that whatever that quote that you we're um, trying to come up with, but that um, helping our children establish a relationship with the Savior would be the thing that would be the most helpful to them in being able to overcome whatever it is that they need to overcome in their lives. That's that's the same thing for us. I think, don't you think as we have been working to try to soften our hearts, do this beautiful, well-educated heart thing, don't you see that we as a group of friends are don't you find in your own lives that we're coming closer to the savior that that's you know one of the things that is happening with each one of us in our own lives oh <clears throat> sorry um yeah that last article that i just mentioned is also byu magazine which i don't get because i'm not alumni but um byu magazine by i'm sorry would I find that in? Just yeah. search the title. Just search the title um, and you'll find it. But um, I was searching that quote that Kristen was paraphrasing and this is what came up. It's not her quote, but I just, I felt like, oh, this is something I need to share. This is something important. So for whoever, whomever needs that, I'm going to read it afterwards. I think it sounded amazing it talked about some studies that they did and then it talked about the things that get in the way and the things that help and one of the things that gets in the way is peers and don't you find that super interesting anybody that was on facebook that saw that that wonderful amazing video um by gordon newfield about peers 
about the importance of um, children connecting with the adults in their lives rather than their peers, that that video is now gone and they're having to really dig to be able to find it and get access to it again. That is such incredible truth that is helping parents navigate this world and understand, oh, we need to get our kids back. We need to have that influence and that connection on them. And now what do you know? That video has gone, you know, we'll get it back, I think. But I just thought that was interesting. Kristen, are you back on so you can talk? Okay, just back on. Okay. Uh, oh, there's a video. Oh, great. Okay, there's a video of that talk, Education in Week 1999. So any of you that were interested in that, um, that would be good to watch as well. Isn't that nice when you find things that you can get the audio or a video that you can listen to when you're a busy mama and you're trying to get everything done? Look at Ida as she's, Ida and Emily, as they're in their cars today while they're connecting. I know, I love it. I love it. Okay, we're talking about whatever is on your heart today. I know that's awkward for some of you. The silence is uncomfortable and not having an assignment is uncomfortable, but that's how we let the spirit direct things. And I do think I have felt strongly like that was important for us to do it this way, at least for right now. Anybody else feel like they have something to share or input to give on what we've talked about so far? Share something. Yeah, great. Hi, Melanie. Um, Hi. So I'm fairly new to this. I just started the music book in the Mother's Learning Library. And then the, like the intro or the first chapter or something, there was one quote that um, the teacher's knowledge is not a hammer, it is a light. Um, I really like that. And then he goes on to talk about um, how if you want to see the light in your face when you're you know, you're, you're in the zone of, of playing this beautiful music or whatever, and, and you think that there's some light about you and you look in the mirror. Well, when you're looking in the mirror, you're not actively in the zone anymore. So you don't have that light. So explain that the performer, or the singer, or whatever, doesn't get to see it of themselves, mm -hmm. but that you get to bring out that light in others, that the, the way that you can see the light is by bringing it out in others and you can see it in them. Um, and that's one thing I've been thinking about with that is, um, you know, I, singing was my life from the time I was very little until like graduating from college. I was always in a choir or several choirs. I always had singing lessons and stuff, but from the time I graduated and then got married and had kids, I had very few like meaningful opportunities for, for using my voice and being in choirs and stuff. Um, and instead I've gotten to teach music to kids and I've gotten to be a choir director for a local church group. And, um, you know, I haven't loved that, <laughs> um, personally, I think because I've been so focused on like, I'm not developing, my voice is not developing. I, my voice is still not where I want it to be. And, um, it's not a satisfying experience as far as developing myself, um, but I guess it's worthwhile to accept that if I can bring out that light in others, then my time is still well spent and, um, and learn to love it. <laughs> you know, Melanie, that's beautiful. I love that you shared that that you just learned. Now, was that quote, the, the second part of that, the, the way that we see light is bringing it out in someone else, was that in the music book as well? Yeah, I don't know if um, my phone is gonna glitch my video okay. when I look it up, but I can. No worry, no, don't even worry about it. I just want to know if it was there. Um, I just think that is so beautiful. Can I you still that. hear me? Uh-huh. Okay, so um, <laughs> I'm just looking at the screenshot that I had taken of it. Um, it says, thou must learn in the first days of this lesson, when the thought and the deed are in the heart, then the light is in the face always, and it is there at no other time. It could not be. Um, and then down lower, it says, that is the greatest of, oh, let's see, it is denied to us all to see it for ourselves. No one may see the light of his own face. Therefore, thou shalt labor daily with diligence, that thy light shall shine before others. Um, and if thou would, I if thou would be the light, thou should cause it to shine in another. That is the greatest of all to bring forth the light. 
So being a teacher is worthwhile too. <laughs> then, then you get to see. Not just worthwhile too. That is the greatest of all. That's what the quote said. And that's going to, that, this is your transition, Melanie, is going from, but wait, I'm not developing me and my voice. You know, that is the thing that you, that you so desperately, and of course would want from having spent all that time, invested all that time. And then I'm sure having a lovely voice to develop. And so here's this truth that is being presented. And, you know, don't we all sometimes kind of, ah, I'm just not sure because that truth doesn't line up exactly with what I want it to be. I want it to be that that the greatest of all is once I get the chance to develop this gift that Heavenly Father has given me. And that's where it's going to be the most fulfilling and everything. And yet that truth is right there, kind of a glaring truth. That is the greatest of all. And I, I just, sorry to make this such a focus, but I feel like this is where I am at right now in my life is the Lord is trying to teach me this very important thing. And it is not this thing that I want. That's not the next step that I want. That's not the thing that I want to do. And yet it's just because it is showing up everywhere in, you know, in everything, I, I can see that that is what he wants me to do next. <laughs> just I'm like you no that, no it's not that don't you see it's this I mean it's close but it's this other thing it has this thing about more like what I want to do and it'll be fulfilling for me and oh so anyway so it's not just a focus on you Melanie it's me because it's so much I'm seeing that okay Lori I'm trying to help you see this is the way this is the way so Anyway, okay. Sorry, I was kind of um uh well, I'm trying to I was going to go on Mandalorian there for a second. <laughs> I was waiting for Ida to respond. So okay. I've got Hey, some, I uh, just put in the chat, I found the link for the oh for great. that podcast that I was talking oh, about. Great. So the quote I still can't find, but I did oh. find the link to the podcast and I put it in the chat. Okay, great. Kate Holbrook, is she that uh church historian? Yeah. Oh, I've been reading so much about her lately and listening. Yeah, to her. I know. I told you you'd all recognize. I mean, anybody who's a member of our church would recognize yeah, yeah. her name because she's yeah. been doing a lot of stuff that's really great. Okay. And it, it and the, 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 I'd forgotten the podcast itself is kind of about their marriage and how they came to grow their marriage. And um, and it talk they talk about their careers and his book that he just wrote and stuff too in it. Yeah. But, it's really a great listen. and wasn't it she was the speaker she was the guest on all in and then his was like a bonus i don't know if they just ended up talking more while the first podcast yeah something like that and they created it as a, an additional podcast i thought that was really interesting yeah okay i saw it but i hadn't listened to it yet so thank you for linking that that's great okay ladies other comments i just love that melanie i am really i'm anxious to go back and read that again you know it's funny when you read through because i've been reading that book too but it's kind of you know wherever you are in your life that's what you pick up right you don't you don't pick up all the parts but you pick up the thing that pertains to you right now so i love that you shared that gosh that's beautiful can you think of all the applications there you know, that, that it, the way you see the light is by bringing it to somebody else. Ida? Oh, was Ida just, are you just switching? Maybe she's just arrived and she's switching. Okay. Sorry, I just didn't want to cut her off. Sorry, looking around my camera. Has anyone else... Um listen to that yo-yo ma advertisement for the master class that marley was it morning Billings, that she posted on the mothers of influence page that's right i forgot all about that amberlyn that was something i wanted to listen to so you listen to it yes i've actually listened to it several times i really like how he puts things and one of his phrases that he used was um i know i'm going to slaughter it because i'm trying to share it transmitting the feeling to other people so he was taking the focus off of always perfecting what he did to making people feel what he was trying to feel 
and that's something that really speaks to me. I'm, I'm a musician. I love to do a lot with music and I'm actually in charge of our board sacrament meeting Christmas program this year. And I'm so excited about it because we're going to have so much music. And as I've been trying to put everything together and get the different groups together, um, I'm uh, just really, really trying to focus on what can we do to bring the spirit in? How can we involve as many people as possible that might not normally have a chance to do a musical something or other? You know, we've got a family group. We have the primary. And I know, you know, depending on what pandemic conditions might be for other places, it might be limited. But um, anyway, so we're just able to do a lot of different things. I'm super excited. Just I want everybody to have that chance to partake of that and feel a little bit as much as possible. Because when you can touch somebody's heart with music, I mean, that is so awesome. And it's such a powerful tool. But anyway, that is definitely worth listening to. He has a lot of other great um, quotes in there. But he just, he, he talks about, he was performing once and he's like, this is going perfectly and it's so boring. <laughs> so then after that, he started trying to focus on helping other people feel. So anyway, it was interesting and it is definitely worth listening to. I love it. I love it. Oh, we just lost Amy. It was her birthday. Darn it. We could have... Uh... Wished her happy birthday. We'll have to do that after the fact. But my goodness, Amberlynn, I'm so glad that you shared that because I had forgotten. That was one of the things I meant to get back to and I had completely forgotten. I've not been on social media as much this week and I forgot to go back and, and jog my brain. So thank you. And I loved that idea that he had a different experience um, playing it perfectly, you know, and having it be lovely and all the things it's supposed to be versus playing it in a way that caused people to feel something. And I love that that's your emphasis for the sacrament meeting program in December to help the members feel through music. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I have, I have my dad doesn't sing, um, I mean, can't sing, <laughs> he tries, but it just doesn't come out right. But he loves music and he loves listening to music. And we had a sacrament meeting one time where everybody got, whoever wanted to, got to come up to the pulpit and bring up what their favorite hymn was and a little bit of why, and then the ward sang that hymn. And so, so even the people who didn't necessarily have a gift for singing but loved music got to participate in a way that was personal for them and that was kind of sweet so anyway I don't that just popped in my head um Ida um so I've been thinking a lot about um that podcast which I actually listened to it just yesterday I read that part in the book that the other gal I don't remember your name I'm sorry that the music book from the Mother's University I read that part too and I loved it but um, yes, Melanie, and I listened to the, the podcast that Marlene did, like, I think it was like a month ago or something, maybe, but I just noticed it. And she was talking about this lady, I think her name is Catherine Brown, I can't remember, but she read this book about her and the woman had seen all these, had all these visitations from people like Mozart and Beethoven, and I don't know how to say his name. Litz or something, something like that. Litz, Litz, something like that. Yeah, composer. Litz, <laughs> composer. Litz. Uh -huh. Anyways, I don't know if any of you guys have listened to it, but I just loved in there. She she had all these conversations. She shared things that she talked to them about, and like education. She talked. To, she met Einstein. <laughs> she talked to him about education. It sounds a little crazy, but at the same time, she produced all these symphonies, and they were like they wanted her to be like you know the person that would bring them to the world basically yeah I don't know if any of you guys heard that so that's maybe a terrible synopsis but anyways in there she, one of the things she asked is like why me and I just love that because they told her um in not so many words uh like she's like I, I didn't have musical training I, maybe I should have been better prepared because they told her that she had chosen this from before she was born, like she'd chosen this to do this work. And, and so they, um, she would, at first she was like, what? Like, wait, okay. So there's an afterlife. Maybe there's a before life too. Like, you know, a pre-life anyways. And then she said, they told her like, if you had had better musical training, 
that would have interfered in you being able to do this work because you would have had your own ideas and understanding and it would have been harder for us to um, guide you, you know? Yeah. And I love that so much because I thought about, there was lots of really great things in that, but I love that because um, I just feel like sometimes it, it feels overwhelming when we're called to do something, but we always have to remember that if we're called to do it, that it's like God's with us, you know, and, and maybe there's a reason that we're, not, you know, like if we knew everything and we knew how to do it, it would be a lot harder for God to guide us, but because we don't always, and we don't, you know, like have it all planned out or whatever, or know everything that we have to rely on him even more than otherwise, right? Like, we would, I, I just read this book called Christy. I don't know if any of you guys have read it. But I saw, I saw. It's about this woman going um, and teaching at this mission school. And she gets asked these really hard questions, you know, like about death and life and what is she doing there? And why did she come and all these things, you know, the kinds of questions that you would get like when you go on a mission or when you have, you know, your faith is tested really. And so there was her and there was a guy who was a preacher there. And he'd been to a, um, a seminary, right? And so he had all this training and they both kind of went through this faith crisis. Like they were asked really hard questions. And because he had all this training, he had all these like pat answers that were not like, you know, like the, like what he was told or how to, like very philosophical and not like meaningful, I guess, because of his training where she is like, wait, I need to know, like, I don't know. And, and she didn't have all that training so she had to go and like pray and ask god and it was really interesting in this it's a story that's based on true story but it was just interesting to see that comparison because i think that's true for us like heavenly father wants to guide us sometimes and we if we are an expert it's a lot harder for him to guide us right and teach us but if we're just uh you know fumbling along <laughs> then we're like we really need help holy father anyway so i just really love that and and the rest of it there were so many great things about it so guys, listen to it if you haven't um i want to know which one that is i don't rem i it seems like i remember reading that somewhere angels among us and oh this woman wrote this book and it was like 50 years ago that she wrote it yeah i listened I to it and it's about her experiences writing these symphonies and having these visitations from that's right all these people which is very interesting very cool. right and amazing and wonderful and i love that and marlene even talks about her own life how she mm -hmm. you know they got they had six moving trucks that had to move them from colorado to alpine utah when they lived in their big house there and had all their nine kids or whatever and then when they finally, after some health issues of her husband and, you know, some financial crisis because of that, they got down to where they moved back east to live in their daughter's unfinished cold basement in wherever back east they lived. And they moved out with their vehicle and a small trailer of their belongings. And they were, she was saying, Heavenly Father, you know, I can't, we don't even know how to print these. Here we have all these books. We've got, we've collected all this stuff. We don't know what to do next. And we don't have the money to print these. If we'd still had money, we would have been able to do this. And she was basically told, you know, that now that you've, all this has been removed, all the excess has been removed. Oh, like stripped away, right? Yes. Yes. Now we can get to work, you know, yeah, because she's that's... not. Yeah that's part of it too. Like sometimes we have so many distractions in our lives and we think we know the plan, right? We're like, okay, I got this. We can do this. And we're both like, okay, that's great. But no, actually that's not what I want you to do. You know, like let me help you focus. Let's remove some of this stuff that's excess. Right. Painful. Right. And, and I, I was talking to Marlene, uh, not that long ago. And I was saying, I feel like I'm in that same place, you know, six years with no full-time job, you know, just, barely hanging on, you know, I feel like Heavenly Father is trying to strip everything away to say, okay, now, now will you listen? Now will you let go of your agenda and what you want, you know, and do what I would like to have you do? And I'm just stubborn enough to go, well, maybe, <laughs> instead of yes. Anyway, 
sorry, Rachel, it's good to see your face. Are you, do you have a comment? We would love to hear from you. Oh, well, I'll share. I, <clears throat> sorry, I was in my massage chair and nobody wants to see all my like chins. <laughs> <laughs> I was just listening for now. I want to see that. I wanted to. You should have asked. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but anyway, um, so kind of along with all of this, <clears throat> I kept thinking like, what would I, what would I share? But it actually made me think the other day. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, my daughter is seventeen, and <clears throat> she just really took to writing music. It's for the past oh. few years. So she writes um, songs and the music to the songs. <clears throat> and she, um, it's been really fun to see her develop that talent. And <clears throat> a while, yeah, a couple years ago, she started a YouTube channel, but it was, <clears throat> I just made her keep it off of being public and stuff. And anyway, <clears throat> recently she asked if she could be able to post it public and I told her yes and anyway I had subscribed to it at one point but I anyway the other day very long story short I um saw it pop up one of her posts and I was like oh <laughs> I wonder what this is and I went and um she was sharing how um the backstory of why she's written some of these songs and one of the songs that she wrote was his masterpiece <clears throat> and she had painted um one of those vases the chinese like the chinese vases that are broken and they fill them in with gold and um <clears throat> anyway i'll put the link in the comments if anybody wants to go but i literally got so teary just listening to her um share her testimony cuz <clears throat> the first verse she talks about being the clay um, in the potter's hand <clears throat> and then being, um, an instrument in his hand and then being, um, that he's the artist and we're his, his work, his masterpiece. And it was just so sweet. And as I was listening to her, <clears throat> I just thought all these things, that importance of music, that music has given her an avenue to <clears throat> express herself and a way to share the gospel and that then she talked about <clears throat> she brought in um you know that she's picked up watercoloring and then she was talking about vincent van gogh's starry night and trying to count all the stars and just anyway all these things and i just <clears throat> i was just so touched and it was so sweet and i just felt that reminder <clears throat> that music really matters that um other people may um, approach life a different way, but especially I've seen for her how uh, music is the avenue that she needs and was a gift that she has been given <clears throat> to be able to to yeah share testimony and to really find a place to express herself. And um, anyway, it just really brought to mind <clears throat> all those things that um, you know the music and the art and the poetry and the <clears throat> nature just all of those things that we don't put a lot of focus on but really can make the biggest difference in our life so anyway i'll share it in the comments if anybody wants to listen to her sweet little testimony <laughs> yes absolutely we would love that she could get some new sub subscribers too <laughs> i know that's always fun I love that. And I love that she uses music to be able to share how she feels and especially her testimony. That's beautiful. Music is so powerful. I've been directed lately to, to use music more in my life. And so I've been doing that because I'd kind of cut it out a little bit. And I think I, I don't know, I've got such goofy, um, thoughts sometimes, but I think on Marco Polo, I might've shared the idea about, you know, what if we had a soundtrack to our lives? Like what would your, what would the songs be that you would have on your soundtrack? <laughs> 
I, you know, and I've got these melancholy, sad ones and I've got some super happy ones, but I've actually thought about that before. I think our family must have discussed that one time, you know, what would the songs be, you know, and I like Katrina and the waves walking on sunshine. That's one of mine, <laughs> but obviously not all the days, right? Uh, but anyway, just love that we can use music to help us feel our feelings, you know, whether they're happy or sad or anywhere in between, but it can really help us navigate some stuff. Ida. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yes, I was just trying to switch so I could see everybody's face. Um, oh, <laughs> sorry. I know. Watch out, you guys. If you take that mute button off, I'm going to get you. <laughs> Or if you move, you know, you do something different, I'm going to pull you in. Um, I love, I love, love, love that we got to have this chance today to talk. And I know it's kind of awkward when I just, just don't, you know, I just pause and let us fill in that empty space. But I felt like that's what we needed to do today. So for whatever reason, hopefully there was something there for you. And I love the things that you all shared today. It was just beautiful. I, I, there's so many, I, I take notes every time. And so I love to go back over what you said. I like to rewatch it sometimes just to see what we talked about and the, remember the things that you said and what you said about it, your feelings and emotions that are connected to it. I just love it. And in this sharing, we get to know each other better. We are, we are connected on an even deeper level. And I love that. We need that. We need to have friends like this. And it's absolutely nuts to me that that we can be for just virtual friends. Like most of us have never met each other, but we feel so connected. And, and we've said before, some of us, we feel more connected with each other than we do with people we know in person. Um, so I, I think, have, I really do believe Heavenly Father has put us together and I love that. I love it. Uh, Linnell, are you ready? Are we okay to turn over to you? We're at the end of our hour, which we're trying to do. Let me remind you again, we're not going to meet next week or the following. We're going to take off a little holiday time. <laughs> Try to let me figure out how to um, upload those recordings to YouTube and get caught up. And then we will meet again the first and the second Fridays of December. Friday, yeah, of December. Linnell? Thanks, Lori. It's been a lot of popcorning today. I didn't feel like there was one overall theme. There were a lot of different ideas shared, but I did gather a little bit that I want to share. Before I share like a summary wrap up, I want to share just a few things that I've been learning from my week and my own life, my own studying, some things that have been on my mind and heart. And the phrase knowledge is power has come up over and over again in this past week. And there are a few reasons. So I feel, and what I'm learning is that knowledge is power only when knowledge is put into action because knowledge not put into action does not bring us power. It just kind of floats in the air. And so the Bible story confirms this, the one about the wise men and the foolish men, because if you look at that story and compare the wise men and the foolish men, the only difference is that one man applied his knowledge and the other did not. And so they both learned the same things. It talks about they both knew the word. So they both had knowledge. But the one who had power to not be washed away when the storms came, when the rain came, was the one who applied his knowledge. So a couple of weeks ago, Lori recommended a book to me that um, it's a marriage related book and I read it and it has changed my marriage. It has improved my marriage. It, there were immediate, instant, amazing changes. And I was talking about this to a friend of mine and she replied and she said, wow, that's amazing that something you learned had the effect to change your behavior and your husband's behavior and improve your relationship. And as I thought of that, I was like, wow, that is really cool. Like I just read a book. And then I practiced it and then it's changed so much. And then that makes me think about, okay, what about well-educated heart? I see all the questions for what book we'll get to that or Lori can share it because it was Lori's recommendation. <laughs> um, yes, it was a life-changing book for me. And so 
I think about well-educated heart and two years ago when I didn't have knowledge of well-educated heart and the influence and impact of each of these aspects, I was a completely different person. Today, the person that I am is very different from the person I was two years ago. And so just by learning something can have such a profound effect. Melanie talked about what she read in the music book about light. And that's kind of changed her perspective in being a teacher for schooling, for for teaching music. I think when we read things or learn about things or hear about them from other people, they have the potential to change us, especially when we put it into practice. This past week, I gave myself a really big goal. I'm in the habit of making goals every week. And so this past week, I made a goal to work on my character and to work on my self-control. And that's really hard. I think um, Kristen was talking about this and she was saying that when we try to change, it's hard. It's really hard to change our habits. And so I knew this was going to be a big goal for me because the the specific area of self-control that I wanted to work on was how I speak to my children. I wanted to speak to them more kindly, with more patience, more slow, not be so quick to chop off their heads or yell at them or correct them or just outbursts. And it's something that I've needed to practice on. It was so hard. And I knew I would have many opportunities to practice this. But the coolest thing for me this past week is that I received help from heaven. Every Sunday, my sister and I chat. She made a personal goal to call every sibling. So she makes it a point to call me every Sunday. And I love our chats especially at the end, because she asks, okay, now what prayers do you need this week? What can I pray for, for you? How can I help you? Or what specific things can I pray for, for you? And so we've done this for maybe a week because, sorry, I had a phone call coming in. So for, for, I mean, not a week, for about a month, every week we ask each other. And so I'll think of my sister and I'll say a prayer for whatever she requested that week. And so I have felt her prayers on my behalf. And so what I asked her to pray for for me is for help with self-control, but not necessarily to know what to do. Like I didn't want to know how to have self-control. I wanted to be taught how that doesn't make sense. Like I knew I needed to work on self-control, but I specifically wanted stories or or some kind of help to teach me how to have self-control. Like what's the process to overcome this? How can I apply this in my life? And so almost every day I received some kind of help to learn self-control. Of course, I did receive many opportunities with my children to speak kindly and and they tested my, my limits and my patience and I felt like I grew. But the neatest thing was that they were stories. There was a story from the friend that taught me about self-control. There was a poem from the poetry book in month three. And I want to read just one one um, stance of it. It says, pay goodly heed all ye who read and beware of saying I can't. Tis a cowardly word and apt to lead to idleness, folly, and want. So that was something I was like, okay, so I can't say I can't because this poem is teaching me that I can. I can have self-control. I can do hard things and I can do this. So have, the heavens are helping me this week. I made a goal to work on self-control. My sister was praying for me. And it was through music and story and art that I received help. And so often moms will get on the Facebook Well-Educated Heart and say, my son needs to learn honesty. Give me some suggestions for books about honesty. And I feel like so often that can be a little forced or a little unwelcome. But when someone really wants to learn something and then just opens up to help, help will come. And help will probably come in the form of story, art, poetry, or music. And I didn't plan to have it come in those forms. That's just the way our heart learns and Heavenly Father can speak to our hearts. And so there is a page, page 238. This is the last thing I'll share in the Counts the Vision book. It's a really um, kind of sad story that Marlene shares from her personal experience. It's called Anchored in Faith. Again, it's page 238. And she talks about how they went through a tragedy that her daughter lost a baby, her baby um, in the womb. It was a stillborn baby. And so 
she's talking about going through the mourning process and about the support that they received as they were mourning the loss of this baby. And she, re- she says here, I thought of all the beautiful flowers that were sent to their home. Some people find sending flowers to be impractical. They don't last long. It seems to them there are better ways to spend money. We forget the importance and power of beauty to heal our souls. And is there anything more beautiful than a flower? It has been said that beauty is God's handwriting. Beauty is a quality of divinity. And to live much with the beautiful is to live close to the divine. It's true. Flowers don't last as a remind flowers don't last as a reminder that beauty has to constantly be refreshed in our lives. We were so grateful for the beautiful flowers. And that last part really stuck with me. It's true. Flowers don't last as a reminder that beauty has to be constantly refreshed in our lives. When we feel down, when we feel discouraged, when we feel far from the divine, maybe we just need a refreshing. Maybe we just need to bring some of that beauty back in our lives so that we can feel closer to him, so that we can have the power and light to be a blessing to others, so that we can feel confident and feel our worth and and our divine potential. And so as we go forth in teaching our children and taking care of our own hearts, I think that could be a reminder that we have access to all of these things. And if we want to be close to the, to the divine and have this divinity in our lives, we just need to seek after the beautiful. That was beautiful. That was so good. Such a lovely summary. Thank you so much, Linnell, for being prepared for having that that gift and giving that to us, sharing all that with us. We will close this. And then for anybody who really wants to know more about that that book, I'll talk about it after. Um, It's not always readily received. So um, so we'll we'll discuss that. But thank you so much for being here. This has been a wonderful Friday. Really, really have appreciated you all being here and enjoy your holiday time. And then we'll be back again, December, the first Friday in December, which I believe is the third. So see you next time.